Hi there, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted up the 3D printed Trihex Citadel token set from the Dragon's Rest. I got this set directly from Tabletop Terrain, as I don't own a 3D printer myself. And this set was actually my first experience with 3D printed miniatures, so hopefully if you're new to this side of the hobby like I am, you'll find this video pretty useful, and you won't make some of the mistakes that I did. The idea behind the Trihex Citadel set is to provide more tangible, noticeable barriers for terrain and obstructions in the board game Blackstone Fortress. Ordinarily you just have these little white lines between the hexes on the board which in the heat of the game are very easy to forget about. I think it's a bit of a shame that there wasn't some kind of terrain already included in the game to make it a bit more immersive, even as maybe a deluxe edition, but this oversight from Games Workshop leaves space for cool cottage industries like the Dragon's Rest to take things to the next level. If you buy a set or make it yourself on an FDM 3D printer, this is what you'll be working with. 33 totally unique terrain pieces, each designed to fit the size and theme of all the individual tiles of the base game. On first impression, I thought these looked absolutely great. Before I got my hands on the set, I was a bit worried that the fine layer texture created by FDM 3D printing would be a bit distracting, but I think it actually adds to the otherworldly, harsh geometry of the Blackstone Fortress aesthetic. Almost like it's some sort of artificial construct, some computer-generated holographic setting that comes and goes as it pleases, which lore-wise is pretty spot on. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in getting hold of a set like this, stick around and I'll give you a tasty discount code. I know, I'm too good to you. Now, in terms of prep work, I got myself a set of cheap hobby files from eBay so I could get a bit more precise filing away the most noticeable little nubby bits. The PLA plastic files away pretty easily, which helps to keep some of the more precise mechanical parts looking a bit better. I also used a sharp knife to cut away some of the little loops that the FDM printing can create. Now, I've dealt with enough resin and weird plastic to know that a quick rinse will often help primer and paint stick better further down the line, but as there were so many pieces I thought it would save time to just give them all a dunk at once and scrub them on the way out. Now, this is where all the people who are experienced with 3D printed models will be watching this with their head in their hands. You see, turns out 3D printed models have a lot of empty cavities inside them, and the print is slightly porous, meaning it's currently soaking up this soapy water like a giant sci-fi sponge. Every piece was literally dripping for hours afterwards, and it took two days to fully dry out, so don't do this. Take a few more minutes just to give each one a quick go over with an old toothbrush and slightly soapy water, and don't be an idiot like me. After they were all dry, I wanted to find out which priming method worked best for smoothing out the layer texture. To compare, I tested out High Coat Filler Primer, Vallejo Brush On Primer, and my old faithful Halfords Plastic Primer. I covered one of the portal gateways with each primer, and actually gave the filler primer two thin coats ten minutes apart as the can recommended, and here are the results. Not a huge difference, especially when they're not right up in your face, but maybe the filler primer looked a little smoother. Of course, for the paint job, I needed a black base coat on everything, so I gave each doorway a coat of black acrylic undercoat from a rattle can, and, well, it's getting pretty hard to tell which is which now. Even though the filler primer was still maybe better if you looked really closely, it would have taken me ages to spray each piece twice with the filler and then again with black, so I just gave up and used black spray primer, but fired it a little bit closer than usual. Well, that was a useful experiment. Now, onto the paint job. Before we begin, all of the paints used in this tutorial are from the same limited paint range we used for the whole Blackstone Fortress speed painting series, and you can find a list of all the paints used in the video description and pinned in the comments. Rather than painting every detail on every piece, I wanted to give all of this terrain a nice unified feel and play to the dark, alien look of the terrain, accentuated with the weird lighting that's unique to each tile. To start off, I want to create a sort of shadow layer for the whole set, even on the terrain that will end up being much brighter. To do this, I used our deep purple paint, Royal Purple by Vallejo. Using a big flat dry brush, I did what many people call a heavy dry brush all over the pieces. You can be quick and messy with this, only leaving black in the deepest, hardest to reach recesses. 
As these doorways can appear on almost every tile in the game, they need to be pretty generic to the Blackstone Fortress colour scheme. And to achieve this, I used blue paint, dry brushed again but a bit more sparingly to catch the edges of the doorways and focusing more on the top half than the bottom. To break up the monotony of the colour, I brushed a bit of grey onto the floor around the portal. And then very sparingly I used white all over the model, but just trying to catch the most pointy areas and again especially near the top of the door. And there we go! In only a few minutes these doorways totally look the part, complementing the colour scheme of the tiles and adding to the immersion of the game. Now, for terrain pieces that are supposed to match objects on the tiles, I wanted to give each piece the same lighting and colour that the printed tiles feature. For example, the big crystals that create these obstructed hexes are much brighter in the middle of the tile than darker around the edges. To achieve this effect, I started off with that purple shadow layer on all of the crystals, and then built up blue pretty heavily on three of the facings, but only adding a tiny bit to the other two. I added a bit of white to the blue to make a sort of icy blue, and then lightened up the three bright sides again, but only used this colour to catch the very edges of the dark side. Finally, I used a tiny bit of white to add some final edge dry brushing, and for the finishing touch I added a little grey to the floor around the crystals again. And as you can see, even though this technique is super fast and dirty, it really plays well with the design and texture of the Trihex Citadel terrain and Blackstone Fortress itself, helping to breathe a bit of life into each tile. Oh, by the way, if you're looking at all this terrain and looking at the tiles thinking, uh, yeah, but what goes where, Tabletop Terrain have actually made a cheat sheet PDF that shows you exactly which terrain pieces go with each tile in the game, so you can make sure you're using the right colours. Some of the tiles have a slightly more pinky, purpley hue, so to achieve this, instead of adding blue and white, simply add a bit of white to the purple paint to get that cold pink. If you want to make the pink a bit hotter, you can add a tiny bit of red to the paint to make it a bit more saturated too. For these little rocky pieces, I dry brushed some grey over the purple shadow layer, highlighted with a tiny bit of white, and then used the same icy blue lighting technique to really brighten up the one hex with the strong blue light. Again, super fast, but very effective. There are a couple of pieces with big monstrous bones or teeth sticking out of the ground. To give these a different feel, I gave them a dry brush with brown. I then gave the rocks a quick pass with grey while I waited for the brown to dry, and then I gave the bones a more sparing dry brush with our khaki tan colour. One of the sides of the piece is illuminated with an icy blue light again, so we applied that same technique we used on the crystals, dry brushing blue, a blue-white mix, and finally white, to create the illusion. And it works pretty well. Now, onto something a little bit more challenging. This mining platform shield thing. It looks pretty cool, and the tiles show it having some sort of bronzy, metal and dark deep red panels. After applying the shadow layer of purple, I then mix silver and gold paint to create a dirty bronze for the metal effect, and dry brush that pretty much all over the model, paying particular attention to the trim. It actually looks pretty good already, but my wrist was pretty sore after all that dry brushing, and I wanted to see how this 3D printed plastic looks with a bit of simple base coating. I mixed red and brown in a 1 to 1 ratio, thinned with a tiny bit of water, and using a slightly larger brush than normal I blocked in the flat panels, avoiding the trim. By the time I hit every panel, the first one I painted was already dry, so I used a bit of thinned down red paint to add a gentle layer of highlight, avoiding the recesses. Looking good! Now, taking a quick look at the tile this piece is used on, there's a strong blue light on two of the faces. To simulate this light on the model, I followed the same steps as the other pieces where icy blue is required. First a simple dry brush of blue, then a blue-white mix, and finally a tiny bit of pure white just to catch the sharpest points. And what you end up with is a really dramatic effect, where it actually looks like there's a much cooler light shining from one direction and a warmer light from the other, pretty much exactly what we were going for. It looks great on the tile too. There are a couple of other tiles that feature a warm yellow light. To paint these models up to match, after the purple shadow layer, give the terrain a dry brush of brown paint. 
Then a brown-yellow mixture at about one to one, focusing on the areas where the light is the most intense. After that, use a pure yellow highlight. The final touch again is to just give everything a light highlight with pure white, just to enhance the contrast. Be careful not to overdo it though, as the yellow is really easy to desaturate and you'll lose that vibrancy really quickly. As you can see, the difference between the browny purple and the warm yellow light is really striking and suits the tiles well. There's one tile that has a slightly green tinge to it. Now to match this, I treated it like the icy blue areas, but instead of pure blue, I mixed blue, green and white to create a cool turquoise, and that seemed to match the tile really well. After that, I just kept adding white to the mix to create the brighter highlights. Now following these simple steps, you can paint up the other models in the token set pretty easily. You can of course use this guy just as a starting point and add more details if you like, but even with this fast efficient approach, it still adds a real sense of depth to the game with only a few hours of painting. So remember that discount code I mentioned earlier? Well, let me give it to you, right after I thank all of our awesome new patrons who joined our Patreon since the last video. Aurelien, Grey Area, Daniel, Dylan, Kieran, Jason, Rainey, Liam, Aaron, Dr. Jekyll, Yaron, Aiden, Richard, Matthew, Adam C, Leif, Lusothia, Adam M, Dwight, Andrew, Giles, Lars, Dan, Justice, M. Cole, and Joey70. Whew, that's quite a few, huh? Right, so about that discount, I had a great conversation with Ian and Samantha, the husband and wife team behind Dragon's Rest and Tabletop Terrain, and I thought this bit of our conversation might interest you quite a lot. Here's Samantha. If you want to try painting your own 3D printed terrain and follow the Midwinter Minis tutorial, go to www.tabletopterrain.shop and use the discount code MWM15 for a 15% discount across anything on the store and it's valid until the end of September 2019. How cool is that? A huge thanks to Ian and Samantha for setting this up for Midwinter Minis viewers and if you need a reminder of that code, the details are in the video description. Now, bear in mind this isn't just a discount on the set I painted for this video, it's on anything from tabletop terrain. The Amble and Traitor Command expansions, modular sci-fi terrain, the slightly naughty looking dice tower, modular vehicles, fantasy buildings, movement trays, bases, the lot. Now, if you want to hear the conversation we had, chatting about 3D printing and how it's changing the miniature industry, and what they're currently working on, their inspiration, and how 3D printers are a bit like cats, click the link that just popped up to you eavesdrop on our call. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful, and if you have, please hit the like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Now you had to sit through that big list of names, so you know that we have a Patreon. You can join for just $2 a month if you fancy it, and that helps us keep stocked of hobby material so we can carry on making videos like this for you. Anyway, I've run out of footage, so bye for now.